what's going on YouTube. So uh, basically this video today is how I started alternate day fasting, kind of probably a little bit of background as well into how I started fasting, which um, was a few years ago now to be fair. So I have got a little bit of experience with fasting before I jumped into this alternate day fasting, you know, because it is an extreme version of fasting, you know, like the most common fasting protocol out there is 16-8, which is basically, so you fast for 16 hours and then you've got an eight hour eating window, which I suppose is probably one of the most commonly used fasting protocols out there. And there's a few more, you got like the warrior diet, which is basically you fast for 20 hours, then you've got an eight hour eating, 20, <laughs> what a worry, so good at maths. So you've got 20 hours, you've got 20 hours fasting, four hours eating window, then you've got the OMAD diet, which is basically one meal a day, so you're literally fasting for 24 hours, or well, I think they kind of say, I think it's 23 hours, and then you have an hour eating window, so you can have one big meal or two smaller meals in that hour, and then, like you say, the next one goes on to alternate day fasting, which is basically anywhere between 36 hours and 40 hour fast before you eat again. And then I usually kind of eat my meals within like an eight hour eating window. And then it's back onto another 36 to 40 hour fast, you know? So that is a very extreme version of it. So basically, let's give you a little uh, background of how I got into fasting. So let's get into it. Basically, when I was a bit younger, I was always going to the gym, playing football, and you know, if I had a holiday coming up, I would try and lose a little bit of weight. And I've got to admit, I didn't really know too much about dieting and that, to be fair. I would literally just follow like the bodybuilding of old, you know, like the proper bro diet. Like I would eat six small meals a day. I'd have porridge with water. I'd have tuna, broccoli and rice, just white fish, rice, just proper, proper boring food, you know? And uh, I would, I would, I would like, my dedication weren't too bad to be fair, like I'm usually pretty good at sticking at something. So I would kind of uh, see some decent results with that. But the trouble is, is I, was always, I would always end up binging because I wasn't eating anything that had any flavor on it. I was always craving some lovely food. And uh, I would literally just binge. So like I would binge for like maybe a week put loads of weight back on, then I'd jump back on the diet, carry on, or I would stick to it until I got to kind of, I'd never say I've really got to a weight where I particularly looked at myself and was like, oh, you look really good. I don't think I ever really got to a weight like that, but I didn't feel like I was carrying weight, because I've always been a naturally broad person. I've always carried a, a, a body fat, really. I've always been that type of person. I've always been naturally quite broad. I've always had like big legs. I've always had like a little bit of a belly. Nothing massive. But then like I say, when I did used to do them six small meals a day, I would get to a kind of weight where I would, where I just, I wouldn't feel like I was massive. I wouldn't feel fat, like I feel like I looked all right. I wouldn't have said that, like there was a few times when I probably had like a little bit of a top four, six pack maybe, but then that would literally only be for like a couple of weeks because I would go on holiday go away with the boys, drink just a stupid amount of calories in a week and eat whatever. And then I would come back and then I would just, I wouldn't worry about the diet again and then I would just eat whatever. I would just eat crap again and then I'd put on the weight again and then come the following summer, I would do the same type of thing. Which uh, looking back at it now was probably a bit stupid really, but when you're younger, you don't really know what, you, uh, what you're doing to be fair. And then uh, basically going back to the fasting, I ended up stumbling across uh, the Hodge Twins on YouTube and um, that kind of got me into intermittent fasting, you know, because that was, that was how they kind of used it. They would use it to lose weight and then basically I would start off doing the 16-8. So basically I would just skip out my breakfast and then that kind of went on to doing like the warrior diet. I wouldn't eat anything throughout the day and then I would kind of eat everything between like 7 o'clock at night to about 10 o'clock at night. And at the time, I've got to admit, I didn't really know exactly what, what day was. I didn't really know it was called the Warrior Diet. I knew it was 16-8, but I didn't know it was the Warrior Diet. I was just doing it basically because I was obviously eating less food and I was dropping a bit of weight. But then, on the flip side to that, so when I was eating, I was eating like masses 
<laughs> mass amount of food. Like, because I can't eat a lot of food in one sitting. And I would sit there, like, and I'm thinking about it now, I would probably eat, like, 3,000 in, like, just basically in three, four meals. So it was pretty pointless. I probably weren't even in that much of a calorie deficit, if any, to be honest with you. And then, um, then every now and then I would kind of throw in, like, a little 24-hour fast. Like, I'd have my dinner at, let's say, 8, 9 o'clock. Then I would fast all the way through to the next day. And it was literally because I was starting to see some results on it, but I didn't really know nothing about it. I hadn't researched it or anything. And then, like I say, I literally would just go on holiday, come back, binge. Or one time I dieted, literally about two weeks before the holiday. I was quite happy with how I was looking. And then I just binged for the two weeks before the holiday. And I was literally the same weight as when I started the diet. When I went on holiday, it was like a complete waste of time. Whereas now, I know a bit more about fasting, you know, so basically that is my background of fasting. I've got to admit, I wasn't a pro on it and I didn't really particularly know what I was doing, but I have had experience with fasting, which is so when it comes to just jumping straight into the alternate day fasting, I didn't have too much of an issue with it, to be honest with you, because I had already had some experience with fasting. I mean, I think we start, we are started, I started this journey on January 6th and um, I think I threw in a fast just after New Year just just to kind of get me back into the to the rhythm of it, you know, I hadn't done it for probably a good like seven, eight years I would have thought. It's been a long time as you can see from my physique, that is not a physique that had been fasting regularly. <laughs> so uh, I just uh, chucked myself into it and I probably I probably got close to about a 24 hour fast, I think, and then my body just crashed. I just obviously, over Christmas and New Year, everyone overindulges, and for probably like the last three, four years, I've been eating and drinking like whatever I wanted, junk food, beer, you know, I've just, I've just, that's hence why I've got to the weight that I am, you know, because I have just been eating terribly. And I, I wouldn't say I'm a big drinker, but when I do go out and we have a good time, we do drink a lot, you know, so, Unfortunately, that's got me to where where I was on January 6th, you know, I got to t just 20 and a half stone, you know, like it was, uh, it was no good, no good for me. I think that was, what, 284 pounds, 285, something like that. It's, uh, it's not a healthy weight, not a healthy weight for me at all. So that's where we jumped into the autumn and day fasting. And to be fair... It wasn't it wasn't too bad. Like once I once I got that little one out of the way where I'd done about a twenty four hour fast, it was quite I gotta admit it was difficult because I just my body just crashed. Like I'd been used to my body been used to just running on carbs for such a long time. And uh, it was it was difficult, you know, but I thought to myself, right, I was pretty proud that I'd done a twenty four hour fast. I thought, right, when I jump into this all in a day fasting I'd like to think I'll be able to get through the 36 hours, 40 hours of fasting. And that's exactly what I've done. I was like, right, I'm cracking on. January 6th, this is it, the Monday. So that was just a normal feeding day. And then on the Tuesday, that was my first actual fast day. So like you're talking 36 to 40 hour fast, you know. And uh, it, it wasn't overly difficult. I think where have I done that little 24 hour fast before, man? I was, um, I was feeling okay, you know. Obviously, I was bit hungry here and there where I was, where I've been used to eating a lot, but I would just drink loads and loads of water. That's like my main, main tip. Just drink a lot, a lot of water, you know? Because um, you're gonna be nice and hydrated. A lot of the time as well with hunger, sometimes you can just be dehydrated and your body will think that you're hungry, you know? It does send out them hunger hormones. So just drinking plenty of water does definitely help. And um, when I would feel a little bit hungry, I would just drink water and then I would just have a little black coffee as well. Like, I quite like just drinking black coffee. I, I like black coffee just as it is, to be fair. So um, it wasn't very difficult for me. And caffeine is an appetite suppressant. So whenever I'd get hungry, I would just have a coffee. I'd zip on it for probably an hour or so. And then that would just see me through. That would see me through that little hunger pain that I had coming along. And then after about an hour anyway, it does usually drop off. And then you're fine again. So um, that's what I would definitely recommend. And if you're not a coffee person, then I would try drinking some green tea or some herbal green tea. 
not just herbal green tea, but herbal teas. And uh, just anything, anything that's going to help you get through that little bit of a hunger pain, you know. Because um, I find that's what got me through it massively, to be honest with you. And then I think the second thing, which is probably the biggest thing out of everything when it comes to fasting, it is your mindset. It's 100% your mindset, you know. Like, I knew that I needed to make a change and I was adamant that I was going to do it. So when it did come round to the fasting, I had it in my head that I was like, you can do this, come on then, you've got this. You're doing this for a reason, you know, and and that's um uh, and that's what I've done, you know. It's, and it definitely I just kept telling myself like, think of the end picture, you know, like think of the goal way, what you want to look like, get your health back on track, and that's what I just keep on telling myself. Right, so me giving out a few tips on how to start intermittent fasting. I would generally just say, go out there and start with the 16-8 protocol, which is basically 16 hours fasting and an eight hours um, eating window, which when you think about it, it's basically just skipping breakfast, you know. Most people sleep for, let's say, on average, eight hours a night. Then you've only got to get through another eight hours from when you wake up, you know. It's not overly difficult, you know. Like, you should be able to skip breakfast, which ain't too bad which, like I say, is probably the most commonly used protocol out there for intermittent fasting. And for anyone that is trying to get into fasting, that is what I would highly recommend to do, is get into the 16-8 protocol. And then once you've been doing that for probably two weeks or so, if you do want to jump into another type of form of fasting or you want to try and work your way up to alternate day fasting, then um, I would definitely just say, basically, if you're at work and you know you're going to be really, really busy for one day, just try to skip out lunch for that day as well, you know. So you skip your breakfast, skip your lunch, and then have your dinner. And then bang, that's a 24-hour fast, you know. So even if you just start implementing that every once a week when you're doing your 16-8 protocol, then you're going to start feeling a little bit better. And then maybe go bang, your next one, you do a little 36-hour one and then throw another 36 hour one in a week, the following week. And then um, it should make it a little bit easier for you. I and mean, then if you wanna start getting into the alternate day fasting, at least you know you can get through a 36 hour fast. And that is uh, definitely how I would work it, personally. If I hadn't have had any fasting experience, that is definitely what I would have done. And if you're interested, I'm actually filming all of my meals this week. So I'm going to be showing you what I eat as an alternate day faster because um, I love my food. I do love my food, you know, I like to have some nice food. I like to have carbs. I ain't cutting carbs out, I'm not doing keto, nothing like that. So if you're interested, that will be one of the upcoming videos where I'll show you what I am eating, you know, because I'm still eating some good food. I'm eating some good food. I'm losing some good weight. So it's win-win for me. Lovely jubbly. Right. I'll see you in the next video. Sweet.